Insight Point and welcome to Jumpcasts. For the second Jumpcast we're going to be covering sibling selectors. So let's jump straight into it. Now let's just back up for a second and think about the ways that you currently choose the things on screen that you style. The first way is to refer to things by their name and that's usually an ID or a class. The second way is to select things by where they are relative to other things in the document. And you can paraphrase this as, I'd like to select the thing inside the thing. Sibling selectors are a bit of a variation on that. They let us select the thing next to the thing. Now let's see how that works. Now there are actually two kinds of sibling selectors used in CSS, the general and the adjacent sibling selectors. And to demonstrate the difference between the two, I've enlisted the help of some well-known TV siblings uh, to, do, to use in the demo. Firstly, let's have a look at the markup for the demo. As you can see, most of it is an ordered list with IDs for each of the list items. Now let's switch over to the CSS. And as you can see, there's a bunch of layout stuff at the top, but probably the most important rules to keep in mind are uh, this block of list styling here which for each one of the the list items I've got a sprite which gives me four states and you can see that we also have this list hover effect uh, at the bottom that allows me to move between the the first background position and the second which when I hover over each one of these uh, the Brady's you can see that they push uh, the, the little buzzer that they have next to them and that'll allow me to do some animation below. So let's have a look at that now. If I reproduce the LI with the hover and then use the adjacent sibling selector which is the plus LI to create a new rule, I can paste in this animation uh, property below and you can see that now when I hover over Marsha, yes she pushes her button but Carol uh, looks rather surprised by the results and if I move on to Carol you can see that uh, now Greg is um, the surprised one and moving all along the list each one of these hover effects is passing on a an event to the following LI except for poor Bobby because he doesn't have anyone following him he uh, has a buzzer but no effect so poor Bobby is always missing out and if you're wondering can we expand on that logic uh, by adding another plus li yes we can and as you can see that when we now hover over Marsha Greg now gets that event and you can see that as we move down the list the the logic follows on and we can target each list item by jumping the one in front now let's move on to the general sibling selector which uses the tilde as its notation which is on the top left hand side of most keyboards uh, near the apostrophe. And if we now just do a replacement of the rule that we just used before, you can see that rather than only selecting the list item following the one that we're hovering over, every list item that follows uh, the one that we're hovering is now selected. Again, poor Bobby misses out, so um, yeah, poor Bobby. Now let's look at the browser support situation and the news is quite good. All of the five modern browsers that you might expect to support sibling selectors do. The surprising news is that IE8 and even IE7 support sibling selectors quite well as long as you don't mess too much with the DOM and with that's JavaScript. And we've got time for today. Uh, please check out the examples and have a play around with, uh, with them. and. Uh, have a think about where you might be able to use sibling selectors in the, the CSS that you're writing now. Thanks and see you soon.